Look out for the Rock Brigade! Hey there, Rock and Roll Junkies. Charlie here with another Grey Wolf review. This week, Def Leopard with their classic platinum diamond selling album, Hysteria. Now, this is the album that made them just superstars. This is the album that, when it came out, basically made them the biggest band on the earth at the time in 1987. So this is, you know, to them, their biggest accomplishment. And it is their best-selling album. You know, to this day, it is uh, platinum, 12 times platinum, it's diamond at this point, selling album. And, you know, I, as you know, in my Pyromania review, I did say that I don't like this album. And I listen to it, of course, again for this, and I have to say that I don't, I don't hate it or dislike it as much as I initially thought that I did. Um, I still feel that I dislike some elements about it, but for the most part, I found out that I do like this a lot more than I thought I did. Like, originally, I thought I only liked some of it, but after after that, listening to it recently, I found that I like a good chunk of this. Like, a good chunk of this that surprised me and left me like, wait a second, if I like so much of this, why do I dislike this album so much? And I'm gonna go into that. I'm gonna go into that in this review. So, you know, without further ado, let's get into this. And this is, track by track, Hysteria. Now, Hysteria was released August 3rd, 1987, which marks the 30th anniversary this year. This August 3rd, 2017, uh, marks the 30th anniversary of this album, so 30 years for Hysteria. And, you know, I, to me, as I think I mentioned in the Pyromania review, Def Leppard, to me, is the first four albums. That's just a quintessential Def Leppard. Uh, albums and style and sound, to me. So this basically marks the end of the golden era of Def Leppard. To me, at least, for the most part. So let's get into this first track being Women. Now, Women starts off real, real, real great with this just amazing riff. And, you know, it's followed by these loud, again, fake drums following the... what happened on the last album with the fake drums, I guess. Lang decided... he liked the sound of the fake drums on the last album, decided to do them on this one. Although on this album, they are, I feel, louder and a bit punchier than Pyromania to give it more of a giant like arena sound, like you know, triggered arena sound. And I kind of, at this point from the last album, I've just accepted it for what it is. There, I mean, it's not real drums, it's a drum machine. But this album, as you know, is very overproduced. So, you know, I just went along with it with the fake drums. I'm like, you know what, it's whatever. Because live, Rick still plays it, but for this album's sake, I just, I just, you know, I'm gonna complain a little bit about the drums, of course. But, I'm fine with their sound, I'm fine with it being a drum machine. Let's move forward though. I really love the vocal harmonies on this song, Women. It's just so catchy, the song overall. I really like this one. It has a Pyromania vibe to it. Like, this is a song that could easily have fit on Pyromania. It's very, it has like that, that kind of hard edge that Pyromania songs had, which um, most of the songs on this album are gonna lack that, that edge, that you know, a little grittiness that Pyromania had. But this song has it, for the most part, it has it. And I just really, I think this is a really well-produced song. Everything on this song, all the instruments are clear, the vocals are clear, everything just sounds very good, very loud, and very in your face. And I just love the overall sound of this song. And you can say that about the entire album. I think it's, well, it's overproduced, but for the most part, it sounds good. It sounds clear. It sounds clean. A little glossy, though, at times. But I really like 
of course, the backup vocals on this, because, you know, Def Leppard are, like, the kings of backup vocals, and it just sounds amazing on this song, and Sav's bass sounds fantastic on this song. Um, it's a really cool solo done by Phil, and then, then it's Steve during the final chorus, and in the write out, it's also uh, Steve. And I just think it's really cool. Great solo. I'm a big, as I said, fan of this song. I feel it's a great, just a great start off to this album. And, you know, it really just hooks you from the first note. This song just hooks you and just builds up that anticipation and hype for the rest of the album. But I feel that, to me at least, the first time I heard this, it, it hyped me up a little too much. Because I was like, from hearing this, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be another, you know, loud, or crunchy, in your face, pyromania style album. Which is not, it's a little more glossy than Pyromania. And I kind of wanted this to be Pyromania Part 2. And it is Pyromania Part 2 production wise, but the, the you know, roughness of the song for Pyro aren't really here. It's here in, in bits and pieces, like in this song and some other songs, but it's not here. It's not a full on, like, heavy hard rock album. You know, and that's kind of gonna be my ongoing theme throughout this of why I might not really like this album as much as I claim to like it, or why, it, why I dislike it, even though I do like it. It's confusing, but I'll, I'll explain it. But I do like this song, great song, to this album, great intro. Let's move on to number two. This is Rocket. It has, it starts off with these weird, like, backwards vocals, and... That's something I'm gonna say about this album. It has these like weird moments of like effects, sound effects, and things. And I just find them unnecessary and distracting. It's just part of the whole overproduced nature of this album. And you know, I, I at this point I just go with it, but I still I still think they're unnecessary and uh, just just get they get in the way. They're not they they don't have to be there. But language just felt like putting them there, and I'm just like okay. But, you know, Rocket then has, like, these, like, rocket launch, like, sounds and, you know, effects. And I, that, I, you know, is it necessary? No, but I did think that was pretty cool to have, like, the sound of a rocket, like, blasting off. It sounded pretty cool. Um, I love the sound of the drum, you know, the drum beats in the, in the intro with the riffs. I think it sounds real cool. And then the vocals come in, and, you know, Joe sounds great. I love the lyrics on this. It's it's uh, real fun to sing along to, and the backup vocals here are great. It's overproduced, but this is like an example of overproduced goodness as far as uh, Def Leppard, late Def Leppard sound. Uh, you know, I love that part. I love Joe's voice on this, and I, I specifically love the part where it's like, Rock it! <laughs> Rock it, baby, come on! I love, I just love Joe's voice on this. It's just fantastic. Rock it, baby! Yeah, I just love it. <laughs> I just think Joe sounds great on this thing. And it has just these great melodies overall. And, you know, I just a bunch of unnecessary effects near the middle. But as I said, I'm like, whatever. I'll just allow it at this point. I can't do anything about it. But so far, you know, I said I didn't like this album. But so far... You know, or what, two songs in. So far, I like this. This album hasn't rubbed me the wrong way, hasn't pissed me off. So far, so good. So far, I think this is a really good album. It has great guitars. It's just, you know, a perfect uh, blend of the pop rock and arena sound, which is loud sound. Yeah, it translates very well live, this song. Uh, I love that part where, where it's like, where Joe goes, We're gonna fly! Rock it! I love it. I just love it. I, I love this song. It's a great song. The solo, it's a dual guitar solo by Phil and Steve. And I think it's a great song. Great song. Let's move into number three, which is Animal. And then Joe comes in with like this smooth voice here. <laughs> I just love the song again. It has just perfect backup vocals. Like, I'm gonna say that about the whole album at this point. I'm gonna say that about Death Ruffin's career. They're just the king of backup vocals, and it sounds great out of this. And you know, I love when it goes, and I want, and I need, 
and I love the backup vocals. I love when it does that. I love the lyrics. They're so fun to sing along to. Um, you know, that one part where it's like, ah, ah, animal. Um, I like that effect. Uh, is it necessary again? No, but I, I like that part. The animal. I think it sounds really cool. Uh, the guitars are on fire here, you know, solos done by Phil, Sav's bass is, Sav's bass on this one, I found it to be a little bit drowned out. I don't know if it's my copy or, or what, but I just, on this one, uh, last time I heard this album, it just sounded a little bit drowned out. Maybe, I don't know if I was paying attention to it, but it just sounded a little bit drowned out to me. But overall, I think it's a cool song, you know, the effects on this at times are a little they do bother me to the point where I'm like, why, why, not? you're just going a little too far, you're just getting a little overindulgent with these effects here. But there are times I do like the effects, and you know, effects aside, I think it's a great song, fun song, great live. So we went to number four, Love Bites. So it has like this weird intro with like those voices at first. Um, now we've reached at this point the first ballad on the album, I guess for a like, slow power ballad on the album, and, um, you know, I don't really like slow songs, for the most part, most times bands do slow songs and not a uh, very big fan of it, but this one I really, really do like, I will say. Um, I love the sound of Sav's bass on here, I think it sounds very, very, very good. Better than the last one where it was a little bit drowned out, I think it sounds fantastic here. I like this song. It's, you know, it's a sappy song, sappy love ballad, but I just, I think it's really good and I really just enjoy it. I get a kick out of it. I love the guitars on this and a great, just smooth solo by Steve Clark. You know, I feel it's a very, very big part to Def Leppard's sound and that's why, you know, that's a big reason why Def Leppard, Def Leppard to me is the first four albums where Steve played on them. You know, when Steve passed away, I feel like a big part of Def Leppard went with him, unfortunately. But Love Bites, it's a great song. Sappy, but fun, fun. I love it. So let's move into number five. Pour some sugar on me! Oh god, um... Um... Okay, I like the intro. The intro, you know, the... Step inside, walk this way, you and me, babe! Hey, hey! I really like that. <laughs> I, lo I love it, I love it, it's fun. Um... But, uh... How do I put this? This is a fun song. It's really stupid, though. Um... Lyrically... It's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. Um, it's, it's just horrible lyrically. It's just really just. Oh, it just I, it's horrible. It's really bad. Like I, one day I I used to really like this song. To one day I just sat down and just read the lyrics. And I'm like, this is terrible. <laughs> it's just like I really just had a realization. I'm like this is horrible. You know, they ask, what is this song about? It's basically a bunch of innuendos, you know, and stuff like that. But I'm like, it's so stupid. It's like like a, like a 15-year-old boy wrote this, you know? And I just think it's really... I can't say it. It's stupid. It's a stupid song, man. It's a really stupid song. Like, if it didn't have the cool riffs and all that, it really would be just some uh, piss-poor song. And it just it really... I don't, I don't like how overrated this song is. I, I think I don't like how people like this one so much. I don't like how they play it all the time. I, I don't want to hear this song ever again. Honestly, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want them to play this song ever again. But I know they're gonna play it every single show till they die. But I cannot stand this song at this point. I just, it gets on my nerves. It really, really, really bothers me. This one. Positive points. I like the bass on this. And, uh, I mean, the fake drums sound good here. Uh, the guitars are cool. The solo by Steve and Phil is pretty cool. You know, uh, and Steve does the right out solo. Um, but this is when this album really just starts to piss me off. This song, to me, is just a complete and utter nightmare. You know, even, you know, even the parts that I like aren't worth putting myself through this song. 
it's not worth it to me. It's just, just it's painful to me to go through this song. And I don't want to hear this song ever again. One of the many reasons why I don't like this album is this song. But enough with this song. Let's go on to the next, which is number six. Armageddon it. Armageddon. Armageddon it. Right? I think I said it right. Maybe I said it wrong. I don't know. Arm Armageddon it. Anyways, it's another dumb song. But I actually like this one. I do. I think this one's fun. It's a little bit, a little, a little bit obnoxious. But I really like it. I really like Joe's voice on this. Lyrically, I have no idea what's going on in this song. Uh, you know, half the time I don't. I've never really focused on the lyrics on this. I've never read them. But I've tried from the last listen. I tried to follow along, and I was like, I don't, I don't know what this is about. Um, but it's a fun song, which was a great solo done by Steve, Steve Clark, and then the write out uh, solo is done by Phil. Phil. Collins, I enjoy the backup vocals on the chorus as always. It's not bad. It's another one I enjoy. You know, I may, may have come off like I don't like this, but I do like this one. It's a fun song. Unlike the last one, this is a pretty good song. I like this one. Let's go into number seven, Gods of War. Intro effects on this one are a little bit pointless. Uh, you know, I feel like, again, Mont Lang is going too far putting a bunch of unnecessary things just to indulge himself on just to put effects for the sake of putting effects and I, it doesn't really ruin the song but I'm like why you know but then when the song actually starts going it, it's really good it's great you know after those effects the bass sounds so good here you know complemented by the, the drum machine it just sounds so good I really love Joe's, Joe's voice when he comes in it just, you know, and I really, just, I really dig this song. It has real cool lyrics, and great backup vocals again. It's a cool, fun song, and I love um, the effects near the end. Like, yes, I'm actually complimenting effects. I love the effects near the end. The solo by Steve Clark is great. And, oh, I, I love how they added Ronald Reagan's voice to this. I think it's really cool how it's like sound clip of uh, Ronald Reagan. And I just really like it. I really like it. It just gives it like this, you know, epic ending with Ronald Reagan uh, talking. <laughs> it's a great ending to a great song. I really like this song. Let's go into number eight. Don't shoot shotgun. This uh, song has one of the worst intros I've ever heard in my life. Um, I mean, what, what, what was that? What was that? Oh, okay. I, I, I hate, I hate Joe's voice on this. It's so annoying, so obnoxious, so stupid. I hate it. If you had played this song to me, if this was like, if I, if I had never heard Def Leppard, you played this song to me, I would just hate Def Leppard. I wouldn't even want to bother with any other song. I would just assume the rest of it. It's just stupid like this thing. This song is a giant waste of space, of time. I can't believe they actually put this on this album. You know, it's annoying, but then the song gets a little bit normal later on, and then we get to the chorus. And the chorus is just as bad. So, like, we start off bad, and then it gets decent, and then it just gets bad again. The song. It's, it's just a roller coaster of terrible, mediocre, and terrible. Which, you know, it's just a giant waste of my time, this song. I, I really, I cannot stand it. I still hate Don't Pour sugar or whatever song I still hate that one more but I, okay I, bass is good on this you know I think sad there was a great performance on this whole album so you know but this I feel this song could have been a good classic style Def Leppard like you know the old albums like Pyro maybe the hard rock sound if, if this if this song was done right but this song was just everything wrong was done on this song every bad choice was made with this song and you know a horrible chorus, just skip this one, I always do. The solo by Steve is cool, but it's not worth putting myself to this this train wreck of a song. So let's go into uh, number nine, Run Riot. I gotta say, it has a great intro with those just, you know, energetic riffs. Uh, Joe brings in this classic, like, screaming style, which I love 
from you know Pyro and all the other al classic albums before. There's some there's screaming style I love, and I really like the chorus on like the last record, the stand up chorus. This is to me the closest you'll get. You know, besides maybe another song, the closest you'll get to like that that classic hard rock sound from Def Leppard, like like a Pyro, like Pyromania. This is the closest you'll get, and this is very much. I, I wish this album would have been like songs like this or Women, you know, that just hard rock, like maybe overproduced hard but hard rock sound, not like the glossiness and the sappy ballads. And as I said, I like the glossiness, I like the sappy ballads, but just because I like them doesn't mean that's what I want uh, from this band. I would have, I wanted Pyromania too going into this. And this song, you know, kind of delivers Pyromania 2. As I said, women in this song are kind of giving me like a, a mini sequel of Pyromania 2 with that hard rock sound, that edge. I, but I really love this one, I really love this one. And Phil does the solo on this and he did it in one take. I, just, I think that's so cool. And it's just a fantastic solo. It's one of my top songs on here. Um, you know, on, on Pyromania, which is my favorite Death Leopard album, on Pyromania, this song would have been maybe one of my lesser favorite songs, maybe even filler, because um, it, it's an okay, it's an okay hard rock song, but on this album, well, it's not an okay rock, I take that back. I think it's really actually a good song, but I just think the songs in Pyromania are on another level. It's like, Pyromania is my top 10 albums of all time. I think those songs are just like, like on another, like up here. And this song, it, it, it's, it's good, but it's not up here. So, <laughs> but still, and on this album, I feel like it's the diamond in the rough. It's like a hidden treasure. This is the sound I wanted from Def Leppard, and I just think it's a really good, really great hard rock sound song, as well as sound. And I wish they had done this for this whole album, you know? But I really like this song. I really do like this song. Yeah, as much as I'm saying it, it might sound like this is my favorite song, but it's not. It's not my favorite song. Um, now, I think, did I talk about Animal? Um, I think I did talk about Animal. Uh, I forgot to mention that Animal, along with another song, is my favorite on this album. So I prefer Animal over Run Riot, but still, this is a great song. Let's go into number 10, which is the title track, Hysteria. And it just has this beautiful melodic intro. It's a power ballad. But it's really, really, really good. You know, it has those moments where it's slow. This song kind of sounds like uh, Hey You by Pink Floyd. You have no idea how many songs sound like Hey You. But it's really good. It just sounds so good, so powerful on this. The backup vocals just add to that, like, this perfect sound. You know, it's really just smooth sound to it. Uh, I adore the riffs on this. They're so good, you know. And, and then the, the bass during the solo sounds great. Sounds bass, you know, it's really complimented by you know the solo being played by Steve and Phil, with Steve doing the write out. Um, but everything is just going on so well during that solo part. The drums, the bass, the guitars, everything is just all in place. It's just so good. And as I said, along this this along with Animal is my favorite song on the album. I can't really pick. It really depends on the day. Right now, at this moment in time, I'll say that Animal is my favorite. But then you might ask me around this same time tomorrow or next week and I'll say, oh no man, Hysteria is my favorite. So they're always like neck and neck. Right now, I like Animal more, but it's just but it's this much I like Animal more in this second. Because I heard Animal today and I really liked it a lot. Eh, but I just gotta say, this is a fantastic song. I never get tired of this. They can play this forever. I hear it on the radio. You know, I, I heard it myself. I play it again on the loop. It's just great. It's just beautiful and mesmerizing. It's a perfect pop rock power ballad, and I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So let's move it to number eleven. Excitable. Um, <laughs> what the hell is with that intro? Um, <laughs> it's just so weird. You know, when you hear that heartbeat, it starts speeding up. And then that voice, are you excitable? 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 Are you? Till a woman screams, ah! And you know, the band said it's basically to symbolize an, an orgasm. It's like, okay, I get it, but it's, it's, it's just, again, like Mutt, Mutt Lang putting those effects for the sake of putting effects. I, you know what I mean? The symbolism, I get it, I get it, 
but you still get that point across either way. I just think it's kind of silly. It's too silly. The, are you excited? Are you excited? It's just, it's a little too much for me, but... Um, <laughs> I, the bass is amazing here. Now they said the song, this song was influenced by disco. Not specifically the sound of it, but I guess the creation of it, which is... I don't understand what they mean by that. Because it doesn't sound like a disco song. But maybe the pop sensibilities of a disco song, because I really hate disco, but this doesn't sound like disco to me, so I don't know what they mean by it was inspired by disco. But I mean, I really like this song either way. It's similar to Run Riot, you know, in that way that it's closer to that classic hard rock sound, just overproduced. And that being said, I really do like this song, because it's like, you know, classic hard rock song. It's extremely overproduced, as I said. But I just love Joe's vocal, you know, his vocal melody and his performance overall in this one. It's a really fun song, and then Joe screams near the end, you know, I love to have Joe screams. So it's it's really cool, and the solo is done by both guys, so it's a dual guitar solo. And it's just great. I think it's a great song, you know, it's a little, again, overproduced, but great. Let's move into number 12, the final song, Love and Affection. It sounds similar to other songs, I feel like, Hysteria, Animal, you know, just that... Def Leppard sound, I guess, but it's another sappy power pop ballad, and I really like this one. I do. <laughs> I really like this song. Yeah, again, you would think I hate it. I would hate it because it's like slow, and sappy, and all that. But I don't. I really, I really like it. Uh, but I like it. I guess I don't. But this is not what I want from Def Leppard, as I said. If anybody else had made this, I'd probably like it more. But the fact that Def Leppard made this. When it could have been making songs like Run Riot and stuff, or Pyromania, or Women, or just Pyromania 2 style songs, they were doing sappy things like this. Like, I like this song, but I don't like the Def Leppard made this song, if you know what I mean. Um, I heard this song was uh, hard to play, like, it's hard to play it live, to exactly like the album at least, because um, there's a lot of overdubs on this, so it'd be like basically almost impossible for them to do it live with only two guitars. But. Uh, they've done it live, they've played it live. They've played this before the album came out, and they've played it in recent times. And I think those two versions uh, sound pretty good, although they can't duplicate exactly what they do on the album, but I think it's fine either way. I still like the song live. Um, now, Phil does the main solo on this, and then Steve does the write out. Now, let's talk about this album to close it up. I think. You know, 30 years old, 30 years going on. There's the biggest album. Um, most of their tours to this day contain most of this album. This album had seven singles. This album is 12 songs. Seven singles. That's literally more than half of the album at this point. Seven out of 12. This was a huge hit for them. It was, you know, explosive. I've never actually seen seven singles by a band. I mean, maybe other bands have done it, but. That's just crazy. Seven singles. And if you ask me, the final song, Love and Affection, that could have easily been a single. That easily could have been a single. And I, that would have gone to like eight out of 12 singles. You know, I don't know why they didn't do that, make that song a single, but it's, it's a great song. And, you know, commercially, I mean. But as I said, I don't like the direction this album took Def Leppard. I don't like how basically after this, they just try to remake this, basically. Every album after this is just Pyromania Part 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So now we're at like Pyromania Part 20, where every album is just trying to be Pyromania. Pyro, oh my god. Hysteria. Every album is trying to be Hysteria. I wish they were doing Pyromania albums, but they're like, we're not going to make a full-on rock album ever again. They said that. Vivian said that, which made me so sad inside that all I get is are these like sappy ballads or these poppy rock songs. And I'm just like... Oh, it's like pour some sugar on me, but worse every time. I mean, they do make some songs right now and again that are okay, I guess. But this is basically the end of Def Leppard for me because that hard rock sound was never really fully recaptured again, which makes me sad. Even this, the sappy ballad -y stuff, with Steve's passing away, it wasn't the same either. Which is very unfortunate. So I, I like this album because I like how it sounds, but I don't like what it did to the band. I don't think this is a good... Mm, controversial. I don't think this is a good Def Leppard 
album because Def Leppard to me is was a first and foremost hard rock band and this is a very non-hard rock album it's very commercial very overproduced very poppy very glossy and it, you know that's that's not what I think of when I think Def Leppard I know a lot of people do but I don't I think of the first three albums with Pyromania being my favorite and Pyromania had a good balance of being glossy and overproduced it's still you know rough around the edges and this one just lost it this one got a little bit watered down for me but I still like I said let's see 12 tracks. Out of those 12, 12 tracks, I said I liked 10 of them. That's a lot. That's a good, like, I think 90% of this album, 95 maybe, just two songs. That's crazy. I mean, I don't, that's why I said I was surprised when I found out, because usually say, oh, I hate Hysteria, or I don't like Hysteria. Uh, I was shocked to find out I like 10 out of 12 songs on this thing. Just shocked. 10 out of 12? Whoa. Wow. I mean, you like that one. I just, I like the songs, I just don't like what it did to the band, is what I, you know, what I came around to. I, I liken that to like Kiss with their album Dynasty. I just, I adore Dynasty, but, you know, I don't like what it did to Kiss a immediately afterwards, because it led to things like Mask, and it all kind of went downhill for a while for Kiss. But then Kiss, you know, got back on track. I feel like Def Leppard never got back on track. Which is why I don't like this album that much, because I don't like what it did to them. You know, it kind of killed that hard rock band. And that's, I'm a very big hard rock guy, and I just, that hurts me that it killed that hard rock band. But I like this album, I think it's a great album, turned 30 years. It's a very fun album. Fun is a word. Great album just to turn on and just, just jam out to, rock out to. It's a great album. The songs are great live to hear. It's a fun album, very 80s sounding. So it's very fun, and it's a good album. I will say it's a good album, great album. It's not a good Death Leopard album, but it's a great album of music, regardless of the artist's great album. Check it out. So let's move now into my pick of the vid. My pick this episode will be Rhett with their album Dancing Undercover. Dancing Undercover is my favorite rap album. I know a lot of people prefer the earlier albums, and they're a little weirded out by me saying I like Dancing Undercover the most, but I don't know what it is about it. I just love it. It has my favorite Rat song on that album, Dancing Undercover. I hope they can cover that one, that, that album I can review it one day. But for the most part, if you haven't heard it, check it out. If you like Def Leppard's, you know, if you heard, like the whole glam, hair metal thing, um, Rat's basically the same. You know, maybe even Rat has a little bit more of an edge to them, similar to Mommy Crew. But, you know, this is a really good album, Dancing Undercover, check that one out. If you haven't, hear it again. That being said though, you can find both of these albums in the description. I link to, you know, a version on YouTube where you can check it out. But if you like it, you should buy the album, support the artists. And as always, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more reviews. And remember, remember to stay metal, stay. Devil and stay evil. Alright.